Hello there, this is an experimental video on my part. I am trying to <laughs> uh, do a live stream on Twitch and teach people how to play. So, welcome. And if you've ever wanted to know how it works, this here is Pokemon Showdown. And let's just get some confirmation that I am live at the moment. Hopefully the sound is alright. I'm doing this a bit differently than usual. I have no idea if this is working right now. Okay. Hmm, the video quality doesn't look very good on my end. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, nerdy cat. Maybe I'm just better off recording a video, I don't know. Okay, well, go on to nerdy, everything's fine. So, welcome to Pokemon Showdown. This is the website. All you gotta do is put in the thing up there. And now, at Showdown, you can do tons of things. The main thing is team build. So, let's click on the team builder button there. And it opens up this new page. And here we have the option to add a new team. So, let's begin. Then, up here, we've got select format. So I'll click on that and it shows me all the formats I can select. From Ultra Sun and Moon Singles, OU, Ubers, UU, RU, NU, PU, LC, which is Little Cup, Monotype, Anything Goes, and some stuff I'm not actually familiar with. But a fun one here is actually the Little Cup. So I'm going to click on that. And there we go. Now I can start to add Pokemon. So click the add here and now from here I can select Pokemon normally if I selected a different tier it would tell me which Pokemon were available in fact let's go back and I'll show you that let's create a new team and let's add Pokemon let's go oh, no 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 let's select the format let's select OU now add Pokemon and this tells me all the Pokemon that in it that are in OU that I can choose from. So, yeah, got a whole bunch here. And then it shows you the ones that are just below, the UU borderline, Pokemon that are too powerful to be in the UU tier themselves. OU by technicality, I don't know what that means. But then UU, the all the UU mon. So when you're in one tier, you can use Pokemon from a lower tier, but never from a higher tier. The Uber Pokemon here aren't listed. So, yeah, that's nice and simple. But uh, let's go back now. Back to Team Builder. Oh, back there. And back to the Spooky Cup team. So, for the Spooky Cup, we're only allowed to use certain Pokemon that are available for the Spooky Cup. And how do we find that out? Go to Cerebi. That's the best bet. Yes. And we'll go down to Ultra Sun and Moon in the corner here. We'll click on that, go down to the other corner here where it says online competitions, click that, and all the way to the bottom of the competitions, and I can click this little tab here, show Pokemon, 
and this shows me all the Pokemon that are eligible for the Spooky Cup. So we got the Alolan Meowth, because they're Dark type, I guess. It's funny that the normal Meowth is, is not available. But yes, all sort of spooky Pokemon, weird Pokemon, scary-ish Pokemon. So Marowak and Cubone, because, you know, they, they have bones. And Pinsir, because that's a scary bug. Not sure what Eevee's doing here. I hear it's because it dresses up in costumes occasionally. And uh, I suppose you could argue that Omastar and Kabudops are creepy. But uh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is select some Pokemon. So let's select the Pokemon Espeon, who I know is available. Espeon is a bit of a kooky Pokemon. It automatically sets the level to level 50, since that's the level at which all Pokemon are going to be for the Spooky Cup. And now we just need to sort everything out about it. Give it an item. The item I want this one to hold is Ferium Z. Since Pokemon like Marshadow, Darkrai, and someone else is really common. And they're all weak to Fairy, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's give it the best ability, it's hidden ability, Magic Bounce. Which bounces back hazards, not to mention bounces back status things, so if you try and poison the Espeon, it'll be bounced back and you'll just poison yourself. And then over here we can select the moves. So I'm going to go for Psychic, um, Shadow Ball, and Dazzling Gleam. Since uh, Mars Shadow and what's the other one, Darkrai are going to be weak to a, a combination of these moves, I'm also going to put Calm Mind on there. And now we get to the, the stats themselves. So here we have Eevee's base stats, and this is what those would be if we did nothing. It's automatically put 31 IV in everything and a 0 in the attack. 0 in the attack is good because we don't want to take too much damage from attacks like Foul Play, which does damage based on our own attack stat. Not to mention Confusion also does that to a degree. So, I'm going to make sure I, this guy is the fastest it can be because I want it to outspeed as much things as it can. So I'm going to max its speed stat there. So I've given it 252 EVs in speed. And we see that's what the stat is at that range. I'm also going to max out its special attack. Which brings it up there. And we have some EVs left over. So I'm just going to throw them. Oh, looking at its HP, I'd rather make that an odd number. So I'll put that up. Four EVs into HP. Just give it the tiniest, tiniest bit of bulk. There we are. Now, basically, we have an Esp Espeon that's ready to go. All its moves are sorted. I could choose if, it, if I want it to be shiny for the simulator or not, or choose its gender, but no real point in that. So we're going to go on now and add another team member. And a team member I think would do very well with this Pokemon is Ariados. So, here's Ariados. Let's look at its abilities. Swarm, Insomnia, and Sniper. Sniper is the hidden ability, but I think Insomnia is going to be the best ability you could use here because Darkrai is running rampant and throwing sleep everywhere. So, we'll use Insomnia, we can't be put to sleep. And let's give it the item Focus Sash. Focus Sash means it'll be able to stay alive uh, for longer. And now, here's a funny thing. we Normally you wouldn't really want a max speed Pokemon with a Pokemon that's only got base 40. However, I'm going to do that. I'm going to max out its speed and its physical attack. And let's see, we've got some leftover uh, EVs. Let's just put them into HP. Why not? Now we can choose the moves. Mega Horn, since it's a very powerful stab bug move. And that would kill a Darkrai instantly. Then what else are we going to have on here? Sucker Punch, because... That is some good priority to have, and since there are lots of ghost and psychic types running around, it'll be super effective on them. And now is the two most important moves. Its new signature move it got in Generation 7, Toxic Fred, which poisons the opponent and lowers their speed stat. Now I'm debating between whether I should be using Toxic Fred or if I should go for String Shot, but for now, we'll stick with Toxic Fred. And the other important move, Sticky Web. I throw out a sticky web on the battlefield and every Pokemon that switches in from then on will be, will have its stat lowered. It speeds that. So there we are. That's all fine. 
Who else am I going to shove on here? I want to have Golisopod on there since that's one of my favorite Pokemon. Golisopod. Item. Hmm. Let's give it a Citrus Berry for now. Restore some health before we get knocked out by the emergency exit. And let's go into its stats here. Now, very low speed stat, but very high attack stat and defense. So I'm going to max out the attack stat and I'm going to max out the HP stat as well so it can take a lot more damage. And as for nature, let's lower the special attack and increase the physical attack with an adamant nature. And since we have some leftover EVs, let's just shove them into special defense. Boosting that there. Okay, and for moves, well, this guy gets first impression. Guaranteed to hit first, and what else? Liquidation. Very strong physical water move, base 85 power, 20% chance to lower the special defense, no, the physical defense. Let's shove Aqua Jet on there, because we could do with more priority if we're going to be this slow. And Poison Jab, just for coverage. Maybe it's not the best move for the Spooky Cup, but it's something I always put on my Golisopod to hurt those fairy types. Now, so we've got a team of three here. And uh, this is basically how you use Pokemon Showdown. You can add a whole bunch more. Let's see. Let's see. Press back on team and validate. Is my team valid for Spooky Cup? It is. So... This is probably inadvisable, but I'm going to try having a little mock battle with just the free Pokemon here. I'll have to choose a name for Showdown. Put random keys in. And no one's ever used that username before. So. Now we come to the battle page. I can choose the format here, and I'm going to choose Spooky Cup. And it auto-selects the team I have. And normally we should have six Pokemon, but I'm going to try with just these three. Press battle. Oh, I'm going to mute this as well. Otherwise you get all those Pokemon, all that lovely Pokemon music. So, we see my opponent here. A full team of six spooky Pokemon. Do we have a chance? So, now I just need to choose which Pokemon I'm going to lead with. And that, of course, is going to be Ariados. And then the order doesn't really matter, so Espeon and Golisopod. And I am ready to go. And now we just gotta wait for my opponent to decide what to do. And if my opponent takes too long, I can always just press the timer button here, so my opponent will be put on a timer. But yes, as I expected, he did not take too long. Now out comes the Rotom Wash. This is just like a normal Pokemon battle. Now what should I do? Rotoms are often holding choice scarfs. So, do I predict that? Or, hmm, let's see, look at his team. Let's see, the only, wow. The only Pokemon that would really care about a sticky web being set up is his Mimikyu. Let's see, Rotom itself and Crobat and Hydreigon are all flying or levitating, so they will not be affected by a sticky web. And Aegislash is very slow anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. And I think Bayonet is pretty slow as well, so it doesn't particularly matter. So what I'm gonna do here is go for the Toxic Fred. Ah, he does switch out immediately with a Volt Switch. And who is he gonna go into? Goes into the Mimikyu. Nice. So we've lowered this thing's speed here by two, f is, it, is it, we lower it by two foot? But yeah, we've now made this Pokemon very slow question is, is it going to be slower than me? In any case, I'm going to go for Mega Horn. We do see that I outspeed the Mimikyu now, thanks to that speed decrease. And we broke the substitute, so that is fine. Now, I'm going to switch into Golisopod here, because I don't want Espeon to take any unnecessary damage yet. And I'm going to go for the Liquidation, as he switches back into Rotom. That's a shame. It can probably kill or force me to be switched out here with its electric attacks, but let's go for Poison Jab. Yes. Thanks to that activates my ability. And I bring in Espeon. 
I'm still assuming that this Rotom is um, choice scarfed at the moment, but we don't know for sure. I'm going to try setting up as he switches out immediately and goes into Hydreigon. Hydreigon base speed. If we hover over Hydreigon here, it shows us some interesting stats. It tells us its possible speed is from 92 to 165. And if we hover over Espeon, we see our speed is 178. So we know our outspeed. The question is, is this thing holding a choice scarf? I don't think it is, but we're going to have to try and go for the Dazzling Gleam. We see it is choice scarf because it outsped me. This tells me that the Rotom is not holding a choice scarf. So that is good news. And Espeon has a higher base speed than Rotom. So we know we'll outspeed. And now let's go for our Z power. Which should be able to take a Rotom out from that HP range. Twinkle tackle, and it goes down. And in comes Mimikyu. The only problem here is that Mimikyu almost always have Shadow Sneak. So we'll click Shadow Ball just in case. But yes, we are knocked out by a Shadow Sneak, which of course has priority. Now we can switch into Golisopod, who I believe will survive a Shadow Sneak. But will it survive a Dazzling Gleam? I don't know. In any case, I'm going to go for the... Hmm, I could go for a First Impression. But no, First Impression definitely won't kill. A Liquidation might kill. So let's go for it. Hopefully he doesn't have the power to take me out. Nope, with a Z-move he does. With uh, Mimikyu's unique Z-move there. But that was a very fun and close battle, and that is basically how you use Pokemon Showdown. You just uh, create a team in the simulator and you can try it out. So let's click X there, and let's head back. Now, I'm going to show you another thing you can do here. So yeah, basically, you can just create tons of teams here, and uh, it's it works pretty well. One other thing I can show you quick is the other formats here. You've got past generations of OU, the Gen 6 OU, Gen 5 OU, Gen 4 OU. And if I, collect, if I click on that, and if I go to Team Builder, and let's say I want to make a team, I can select Gen 4 OU, for example, and I can start adding Pokemon. Let's add a Pokemon like, say, Ampharos. And you see, we actually have the Gen 4 Ampharos here. And its abilities, no hidden ability, because this is Gen 4. So you can make up little nice things on Pokemon Showdown. And uh, it's just very, very handy. And there are other things we can do, like random battle here. Random doubles battle, let's click that. Let's have a random double battle. So, Pokemon Showdown here has automatically selected random Pokemon for me to use. And, uh, we see we have two slow Pokemon here. And Guzzlord does not like the look of that Beedrill, who could possibly be a Mega. So, I'm gonna Iron Head the Beedrill and switch out the Guzzlord to... Hmm. This is tricky. Nothing particularly likes Beedrill here. But I'm gonna go into Cinchino. Oof, Mega Beedrill. Oh. Wow, it lived. Okay. Now, Cinchino's probably done for, like, uh, nothing outspeeds a Mega Beedrill, really. And I don't have any priority here. So, I'm actually going to go for the Iron Head on it again, though. And let's go for... Let's go for the Rock Blast on it. As he switches out. Smart move. U-turn, of course, switching you out. And, uh, yeah, now I just have to wait to see what he's going to bring in. Probably something that resists. No? But something with a high physical defense. Now, none of these Pokemon love Beedrill. Oy. Hmm. Tell you what, let's bring back in Guzzlord, because Guzzlord can easily eat a Delmise here. And let's go for the Mega Horn on the Leafeon. Crunch the Delmise. I may be going a little fast, but, uh, yeah. Oh, good. We crunch the Delmice, doing nice damage. And Megahorn comes out, finishing off Leafeon. And Escavalier is still able to live. Hmm. So let's go for the Iron Head, but I'm probably going to go down, since I believe I'm slower than the Delmice. 
Hmm. And let's protect with the Guzzlord. There we are. x Scizor doing no damage. Oh, and we do outspeed the Delmise and kill the Beedrill. Now. Hmm. Let's go into Samurott here. Ooh, Minior. Minior is a powerful Pokemon with its Shell Smash ability. Hmm. Samurott should definitely outspeed it. Delmise. It's quite a slow Pokemon. So... Actually, let's go for Scald on Minio, because we know that's super effective, and Crunch on Delmise. Doing nice damage to Minio, but of course it does sell Shell Smash. And when its HP drops below 50%, it should form change. Although it hasn't yet. Ah, there it goes. Shields down. Its stats now change to be more offensive. Ooh, and Gardevoir. Guzzlord is not going to like the Gardevoir. But I tell you what, we'll go for a Scald on Minio. And since Gardevoir loved to... Wait, it can't Mega Evolve because Beedrill did. So let's switch out into Grumpig. Oh, that Acrobatic's doing heavy damage at plus two. As Will-O-Wisp comes out onto Samurott. But Samurott, this Samurott doesn't mind because it has... It is a special attacker. Because, of course, a burn reduces the attack by 50%. If we look here... We hover over Samurott, we see the attack stat in red at 78, meaning it has been halved from that burn. Hmm. So, let's go for a Scald on the Gardevoir, and uh, I'm pretty sure Grumpick is going down here. Um, oy, let's, let's taunt Latios. Ooh, Latios has Thunderbolt. Wow, I can't believe I outsped there. As out comes that dazzling gleam, yeah. Oh, I didn't outspeed it, silly me. Ice beam. And very little I can do here, so. My opponent having some good OU bonds there, and I'm just having <laughs> some trash. But that is the luck of the draw of random battles. Ooh, we managed to do some extra damage on Gardevoir, but it healed up anyway. Ugh. So this leaves us with just Guzzlord and Whimsicott, who are not the most offensive of Pokemon. We can Wide Guard, though. As we Leech Seed Gardevoir. Hidden Power comes out, Hidden Power Ice, perhaps? And we block the Dazzling Gleam thanks to the Wide Guard. Now, let's... I think there's a chance fail will protect. Uh, protect will fail. But, actually, I'll go for Wide Guard again and Encore the Gardevoir. So Gardevoir is forced to go for, for Dazzling Gleam now that it is Encored. But Wide Guard will protect us. And, Wide Guard again. And let us Leech Seed. Hmm. Yeah, Wide Guard again. Uh, leech Seed on Latios. So Whimsicott is gaining tons of HP back. From the Leech Seed of both of these Pokemon. And my opponent forfeits there. Oof, very close game. Only barely just able to win that. So yes. That is pretty much Showdown. It's an online simulator that is great for practicing, especially for the Spooky Cup now, because in-game there's no current way to practice it. I mean, you could ask people to, uh, you know, do the same thing as you, but whether or not they would is totally up to them. So yeah, that is Showdown at a go. The team builder, I have millions of teams on my personal account. Well, maybe not millions, but at least over 30 or so. And it's pretty fun. That there was a nice little intro intro to Spooky Cup. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you learn how to use Showdown. Any questions to the people watching?
I believe there's only one person watching, but let's see if they have any questions. Yes, everyone I battled with just now was against live players. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm this username. Every, everyone, whenever you press battle here, you're not battling the AI, you are battling other people. One thing I should add is that all these battles, except for the random battles, actually, even the random battles are rated. So, at the end of my battle there, you saw I got a little score. So, yeah, it tries to match people up with the higher scores, you know? The only problem with Showdown is that when you start getting like a decently high score is that you come across people using just the bog standard win at all cost teams, you know, because they want to get the high rating. So it's, it's not the most varied of places for battling, like I much prefer battling on the 3DS, but for practice it is brilliant. <laughs> Anything else before we finish up there? I think that's pretty much everything I can s I need to tell you So yeah All right, I hope this tutorial helps some people. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed